One of the uh, sections of your talk that garnered probably the biggest reaction on our social media feed tonight, certainly on the YouTube feed, was when you started talking about the arguments that we have within the church with each other. Yes. And one of the ones that you said struck me um, when we talked about music, because I'm, I'm an Adventist pastor and I also happen to be a drummer. And I did not come back to the Lord. I drifted from the church in my young adult years, and I came back to the Lord in my early 30s, and I started playing for a praise team. And we got invited to go and play, be the worship band for an event, and they literally ran me off the stage and threatened to throw my drums into the campfire. Yes. I was so fragile in my faith at that point that I wondered if I, should, if I made a mistake and should have just walked away from the church again. And I had so many people speak life back into me. Yes. And so I want to give you an opportunity to respond because this is one of the questions that came up online is, is how do we as members of the church help to change the hearts of those who believe it is their duty to confront anything that they deem is unfit or unholy or sinful or whatever that comes inside their church? We need to pray for souls who believe God has called them to police music for God did not call them to do that. God has not called anyone to pull tares that they perceive in music and uh, they are sinning before the Lord. Or dress or anything else. Yeah, yeah, or anything. Appearance, food. Someone saw me drinking milk one day and they said, are you telling me that we will be drinking milk when Jesus comes? And I realized I was in trouble. This sincere soul doesn't believe that the redeemed will drink milk by the time Jesus comes. And some, certainly somebody viewing tonight is convinced of that. We need to put on the mind of Christ. How is it that thy master sits and eats with sinners and publicans when he was against the protocol of the church for a rabbi to find himself among sinners? That's the point. If Jesus' voice sounds like many musical instruments, what does it sound like when he sings? Yeah. Now, I remember one instrument when it first came into the church. I read about it. I don't remember them. I wasn't around then. Uh, there was huge division in the church. Um, and and uh, some churches literally lost attendance. Uh, there was outrage that the devil's instrument had made it into the house of God and that very worldly musicians were now writing music for the church, uh, which was a blas blasphemy. And such as was the tension when the piano came into the church. Yeah. So then uh, now the piano entered the church, and when that generation physically died, suddenly Jesus loves pianos. And, and then uh, 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 Bach and other people were writing music for organs. That, too, was a scandal when it came into the church. I remember me in the, in the early 70s, I was walking up to play special music for Sabbath school with my little guitar, $9, from the thrifty store, which is now called uh, Rite Aid. Okay. Uh, it yeah. came off the wall for $9. And nope, you're not going in here with the devil's instrument. And there had to be an emergency board meeting. I can hear the shouting from outside. And they finally said, okay, we'll let him sit in the front row with a mic in front of the guitar and a mic in front of his mouth. But we, we, we can't bear to see it on the stage. And, uh, you know, then some of those people passed away and suddenly the guitar is an appropriate instrument as long as it's used properly. In other words, we will never get past the subjective convictions of people who feel it's their calling to pull the tares. Mm -hmm. Jesus commanded directly, specifically, they must come together. Now, th let's just be honest. There are some congregations that for the last 50 years, this is how they run their service. They're not going to change. Yeah. So plant a new church in town. And, and there's more room for ministry. If the town has 36,000 and you have a single church, there's room to do more ministry. And let's meet them where they are with this church. There are multiple expressions since music is not about uh, salvation but to experience God. I experienced it through classical music. Mm -hmm. My kids are just like you. They play in praise bands. Yeah. And my son played for Laura Story the year she won the Grammy Award okay. for the newest Christian artist. Yeah. He plays guitar way better. I mean, he, they, they, they um, compose incredible music that brings me to tears. It's not my style. But who says it has to be my style for salvation? I must exercise a discipline. And there are those 
that this might be shocking to you, but the Lord is going to speak to you tonight as you sleep. It is time to put on the mind of Christ. We must show more mercy to each other, and the Lord will lead us through this question. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the statements that you made was very powerful is this. The Lord did not call us to protect his church. Jesus can protect the church himself. Yes. Himself. Instead, we're, I added this part, instead we are called to love the sinner. Yes. And so we don't have to worry about watching and, and looking for the bad. Instead, we need to look for the good. Build the good, yes. Build the good. Look, look, at, look at Jesus who is perfect and good. We all have good and we all have bad in our characters. Whoever looks for the bad is going to stay very busy. Because all of us have weaknesses that are easy to spot, embarrassingly so. But if we look for the good in people, we will find that also. Put on the mind of Christ. Jesus sees not only who you are, he sees what you will become through his glory. So we must not just look at each other the way we are. We must see in each other what we can become through the glory of Christ. Mm -hmm.